So there's a big push for analytics engineers right now. But do you even know what an analytics engineer is? Today we're going to cover that and why you shouldn't jump into this weird, interesting career choice that seems to be a viral trend right now. Let's get into it. The job market is noisy, job titles are misleading, and you have junior analytics engineer positions that are posted requesting five years of DBT experience, cloud experience, and a master's degree? What? So, you know, a lot of folks are assuming that the analytics engineer position is a smooth gateway into a data engineering position, or they think that it's a happy medium you know, in between both worlds of a data analyst and a data engineer. The truth though, <laughs> is that you are often stuck in between both worlds, not really having the power of either. And you're fielding questions all day like, why does this report not match mine? And troubleshooting and everything that comes along with fielding those questions. But you don't have the access or the authority to really do anything about it. You're having to manipulate things in Power BI using DAX and M, and that's where your world is now all of a sudden. It's like, you know, signing up to be Iron Man and finding out that you're the admin assistant that is just controlling the colors in the HUD. So you want to build pipelines, maybe one day become a full-fledged data engineer, but instead you are spending months fixing naming nomenclature in DBT and, you know, making uh, all of those various field names that are coming over from the model into user-friendly field names in Power BI or worse. They give you a elation login and tell you, I need all of this lineage data documented for our business. You, you know, when you're at a smaller company, it's probably just you, your SQL queries and 200 variations of what revenue means and also 200 different ways to calculate revenue for those different areas. <laughs> and it's difficult, it's frustrating, it could really be challenging. There are no analysts, there's no engineers, there's just you at a small company. And you are often burning the candle at both ends because you are like the sole data person for hundreds, maybe a thousand people. Unlike data engineers, you often don't have the budget or the autonomy to fix upstream issues. Sometimes don't even have access to it. And so you're creating workarounds to get to the data. You're doing VBA. You're doing, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff in Power BI just to try to get things to a place where you could hand something to somebody. Hopefully it's fantastic. Sometimes all of those challenges make it difficult. So at a big company, you are the person that is trying to figure out how do I get access to this, right? You're trying to get the attention of your CDO's central data org and trying to get them to give you access, but they treat you like a second rate citizen. Like you're just not worthy. Like you're going to come in and screw up all the data for all the company. <laughs> and you know, you're just not even a real data engineer to them even as an analytics engineer. And so, you know, maybe one day you finally get their attention. You finally become Captain America picking up Thor's hammer, hammer and you become worthy of having access to production data. But they comes with the caveat that you have to pull it between 12, 12 a.m. and 1 a.m. every day. And that's the window of opportunity that you have to pull production data and refresh all of your tables. So the worst part of all this, you are still stuck at family dinners trying to explain to them what it is that you do. No, Grandma, I don't fix computers. I engineer data. How did we get here? DBT came in and changed the game. It gave SQL savvy analysts 
access to be able to do some transformations by using SQL and really bridge that gap between analyst and engineer. And so companies thought, let's just combine those two, right? You know, we don't need all these full on data engineers. We can, for a lower, you know, headcount price, get higher analyst engineers and they could help us with some of this overhead and some of this work. You know, companies jumped right in because they needed help fixing all these all this data modeling and fixing all this dirty data that was in this where in the warehouse. Meanwhile, we have engineers that are struggling to keep up with tech debt and it just keeps on piling up and piling up. But now the analyst engineer role is starting to split. We're starting to see some split between that. We have some AEs that are really almost full-fledged data engineers. They're building some really complex models. They're writing CICD tests and really doing a lot of that engineering work. While we have others that are doing some more advanced analyst work. So you know, a little bit more than a regular data data analyst and not necessarily a data scientist or data engineer, but they're, you know, translating a lot of the business logic and they are creating and cleaning up the data sets. But the job descriptions, they still rarely match what that day-to-day -day work really looks like. And we see that even with engineer job recs and analyst, regular analyst job recs. But we have this cool title, analyst engineer, but you know, still companies aren't really sure what to do with those, similar to what they, they weren't really sure what to do with data scientists years ago. So, you know, I once had a title, senior advanced analytics engineer. And so, you know, it sounds like a cool title and I expected it to be a little bit more data science-y because it sounds a little bit more data science-y. But I ended up really doing everything. I was doing the engineering. I was doing the architecture. I was doing the analysis for our cybersecurity group. And um, <clears throat> thankfully, I had an amazing BI analyst in Norris, and he was awesome. And I was able to hand off a lot of the data models off to him. And he was just a magician with you know making things visually aesthetic and pleasing for our business users. Um, but the rest of it, I own that full stack. So that's a lot of what an analytics engineer position feels like. Sometimes you become just that data guy. You know, we start to roll back to 15, 20 years ago where you just had these data people and they really, you know, did the whole gambit of what was going on. Uh, you know, it starts to become a lot like genie from Aladdin, right? You have phenomenal cosmic power and an itty bitty living space, but instead you have phenomenal, uh, you know, overarching responsibility and itty bitty access, right? You're, you're trying to do all of this without really having the control and power to do it all. So where do you go from here? What do you do with all this? It entirely depends on what your endpoint wants to, you want your endpoint to look like. You know, if you're trying to become a data engineer, then analytics engineering could possibly be a great stepping stone to get there. It could be that, that gateway. It's not necessarily going to be smooth, but it could be that gateway to get you to that point. But only if you treat it as a temporary step, it is easy to get into this position and get stuck there and find yourself unable to move up. If you don't, you know, make sure that you don't treat it as your final destination. You make sure that while you're in the role, you are understanding and learning how does data get into the warehouse, how orchestration tools work like Airflow and ADF and how to use them effectively, how to monitor and debug the pipelines. And for the love of data, get comfortable with Python, even if it's just enough to automate some of that grunt work that you're probably doing. Now, if you're just renaming columns and cleaning up some metrics, then 
you're really not building that muscle. You're not building the skills up to become that data engineer. So make sure that you're pushing forward and learning those different skills. If you love the idea of being a analytical engineer, then, you know, awesome. Uh, I'm not going to you know, discourage you from doing that. If that's what your passion is, then absolutely go for it. But don't be passive in the role. Make sure that you are pushing for version control and proper CICD, right? Don't just rely on save as in DBT cloud, you know, make sure that you're really pushing for CICD. You are creating testing frameworks like DBT tests and data contracts, and you're really pushing for those things. You are documenting the data standards for your organization, right? Because you bridge that gap. You really should be bridging that gap between analysts and engineers and helping to really, you know, create those standards that are going to be for your whole data org. Now, if you you know, under, and also understand wherever you land. Make sure that the company absolutely has a clear understanding of what your role is and what you bring to the job. Because if you walk in to a mess and you don't have any buy-in, you don't have any tools, and you don't have any support, you're not an analytics engineer. You're a data janitor with a fancy title. Be sure that you are looking for those growth paths and not just buzzwords and cool job titles. All right, let me give you a real world example here. I worked for this team where they had hired a analytics engineer and they had one goal. They just threw her in there and said, just make these dashboards work for us, okay? There was no documentation. There was no access to any of those upstream pipelines, no testing framework. Just fix it and get it done. Can you imagine? Um, <clears throat> so she did what she could. You know, she spent months going through and rewriting a lot of the business logic in Power BI because, again, she didn't have access to those upstream data pipelines to be able to make any changes there. <clears throat> and she was trying to make sense of all these metrics that, again, seemed to change every time that she talked to a different business stakeholder. Every time she got something working and she would get it out to people to take a look at, you know, the data upstream would either change or somebody would come up and be like, that's that's not how we calcul calculate this marketing revenue. And so that's just what you end up with sometimes as an analytics engineer. It was really became for her very frustrating and was like whack-a-mole with formulas and data. And eventually she got frustrated to the point where she started pushing back on people. And it's important to learn how to do this, you know, very professionally. But and she did she did absolutely did an amazing job with it. You know, she asked for ownership of the metrics from the business. She, you know, pushed to move the logic for these key metrics more upstream and to be, for it to be table driven instead of hard coded in some of the pipelines. And that's when things started to finally turn around, not only for her, but for the business. Data was more clean. Reports ran more efficiently and quicker because that logic was being handled upstream during the time of ingestion instead of at the point the reports were being generated. And, you know, people started to bring her into the fold. She reached out to the engineering team, built up those relationships. They learned that she was competent and knew what she was doing. And so they really brought her into a lot of the projects and a lot of the situations that were going on. Um, you know, they gave her access to their ADF uh, resource and they got her into their Git repo. And really, she was able to come in and really start to make a difference finally. And that's when she finally got to start to do some of the data engineering that she was really passionate about and wasn't just, you know, doing the grunt work. Her title didn't change. She didn't become a data engineer, but the role finally made sense. She was finally bridging that gap and doing a little bit of all the work that she really loved. The first half of this story, this is where a lot of analytics engineers end up if they're not careful. The second half 
that is what's possible when the role is respected and when you take control of your career path. Here's the bottom line. The analyst engineer position isn't broken. It is just misunderstood. And in a lot of orgs, isn't even clearly defined. But if you know what you want from your career and you are intentional about how you grow in this role, it really can be a powerful launching pad. Maybe even your path to become a data leader or a data engineer, if that's the goal that you're striving for. <clears throat> Just don't go in blind. Because if you do, you might find yourself stuck doing all the grunt work of both an engineer and an analyst. No ownership, no visibility, and no reward. So ask yourself, are you building the skills that you can leverage to further your career? Or are you stuck renaming fields and fixing dashboards that you didn't even break? Because in this industry, job titles mean nothing. Your skill stack really is what is going to move, your, move you forward. I hope you enjoyed today's session. If it did clarify what an analyst engineer is, be sure to smash that like button. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe. <clears throat> I'm Chris from the Data Engineering Channel, and whether you are modeling metrics or building pipelines, I've got your back. I'll see you in the next video.